What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're gonna be checking out the highly anticipated VGN Dragonfly F1. This is the Pro Max version. I got a lot of great things to say about this mouse, and the question is, is this gonna be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. All right guys, and here we got the Dragonfly F1 Pro Max. I picked this mouse up. I actually pre-ordered it off of metkeys.com and I've been really excited to check this out. This mouse has had a lot of hype and honestly the shape on it looks pretty promising to me. And although I did use my own money to purchase this mouse, if you're interested in picking this up off of metkeys.com, you can use my code aimadapt mk to get five dollars off so starting out with the specs of this mouse i'm honestly just truly blown away by the price that this mouse is coming in at i did get this on some type of a pre-order special i paid a little bit less than what it's going for now i do believe you can currently pick this mouse up for 56 dollars 99 that's us of course but what's really cool about that is in the box it does come with a cable USB-C cable comes with a dongle comes with the dongle adapter you also get grips included with the mouse and you also get an extra set of these smaller style PTFE skates. So considering everything, and we're gonna jump in the details here in a minute, but the build quality and everything this mouse comes with, it's honestly incredibly impressive. And when it comes to the build of this mouse, this thing honestly feels incredible in hands. It feels solid, it doesn't feel too flexible or anything like that. If you squeeze incredibly hard in the center, you can get some flex towards the middle. However, I don't have any issues with activating the side buttons on my copy. And it does feel more solid towards the front and the rear where you get absolutely no flex at all, no matter how hard you push on it. And I do wanna let you guys know that this flex is not noticeable at all. As a matter of fact, when I first picked this up, I thought I had no flex at all until I started pushing in the middle as hard as I could. You do get a slight bit of flex, but honestly, this is on par with some of the top mice out there. And then when it comes to the bottom of the mouse, here's the layout on the bottom of the mouse. It does have these skates on here. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I am not a fan at all of these skates. I feel like these skates are very hard. Uh, these are honestly some of the worst skates that I've ever used. However, with that being said, there are options out there. We could pick up aftermarket skates. I do currently have a couple of pairs of those on the way. So I'm excited to check those out. I have not got a chance to use the extra smaller skates that are included with it, but it does look like these skates are some pretty big size. If you wanna try and throw something else on here that's similar from another brand or something like that, that would always be an option as well, putting some dot skates or something like that. Then when it comes over here to the functionality of the mouse, over here on the right side, when you have the mouse flipped upside down, it's gonna have the on and off button. You just toggle it on or off like that. Really simple to toggle on and off, works perfectly. And then over here on the left side of the mouse, you do have the DPI button. And then coming back over to the top of the mouse, as you guys can see here, the scroll on it is a little crooked. It is kind of diagonal and closer to the left side. I didn't notice any type of an issue with this. Um, I actually am gonna open this mouse up later on and I'm gonna make some changes to it, trying to make some adjustments myself because I am enjoying this mouse that much. But again, not an issue. I haven't had any issues with it causing any problems with my performance or my gameplay or anything like that. When I'm using the mouse and gaming with it, I honestly don't even notice it. And then when it comes to the buttons on the mouse, it does have these really aggressive comfort grooves on mouse one and on mouse two. Now for me personally, I didn't really have too many issues with these. I have seen people kind of complain about them. If you're not holding the mouse dead center like that with your fingers, however, if you were to grip the mouse at an angle or if you were to hold your fingers closer to the scroll button or anything like that. I do see how it can be kind of awkward and different for people. But again, for me, not too much of an issue. The one thing that I would like to see them change on future batches if they could is this middle piece right here, it kind of sticks up. And when you're going to activate the scroll wheel, if you grip your mouse more towards the front, these corners right here are kind of pointy on this middle piece. So I kind of feel like this middle piece here is unnecessary. It kind of adds additional weight and it just honestly just kind of gets in the way. And again, this isn't a major deal breaker or anything like that. I'm honestly just nitpicking this mouse as much as I can because I like this mouse that much and I truly think that this mouse is that great. And then when it comes to the actual clicks on the mouse, my copy, they're kind of mushy and they do have a bit of pre-travel. You know, honestly, they're not some of the worst clicks that I've used, but I do want to say that these stock switches in here, I believe that these are Kale 8.0s. I could be wrong, but overall these clicks, they do feel snappy, but they're just a little too heavy for my taste. And honestly, one of the first things I noticed when I got this thing out of the box, honestly, when I grabbed this mouse, I was like, wow, this thing feels incredible. And then I started clicking it and I was just like, mm, it's not really a fan of the switches in here. And the funny thing about it is when I got this out, I was like, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, 
I'm gonna personally swap the switches in here myself. And as I was getting ready to record this video, they just announced that they're actually gonna be coming out with a MOBA version of this mouse. It's basically just gonna be the Pro Max and it is gonna have the Huano Blue Shell pink dots in there, which is what I'm actually gonna swap out myself on this copy as soon as I'm done filming this video. And then when it comes to the scroll wheel, honestly, the scroll works great. I think that it's perfect the way that it feels when you're scrolling with the steps and the button that you activate on the scroll wheel, it honestly feels perfect to me. I like the weight, I like the feel, it's nice and crispy, tactile, works perfectly. And then over to the side buttons. The side buttons aren't exactly the best. They're not the worst that I've ever felt, but as you guys can see here, both buttons in the front and in the rear, they actually have quite a bit of pre-travel and then after you activate the switch, they have quite a bit of post travel as well. The one good thing is though, is that there is a solid wall back there. So if you do push too hard on these, that it does actually stop with some good force. And then if you were to rock these side buttons, they have a little bit of rocking in them. Honestly, not a big deal at all. As far as that goes, they're great. They feel nice and sturdy and solid. So let's go ahead and drop a sound test on what all the clicks on this mouse sound like. This mouse does come in three versions. The original F1 version, that actually comes with a Compex CPU in it. And that version is not going to have the 4K compatibility. Then the next version is the F1 Pro. I actually have a copy of the F1 Pro on the way as well. So when I do get that in, I will do in-depth comparisons between these two. But the F1 Pro, it does also have a Nordic MCU. It is a little bit of a different Nordic MCU. I'm not sure if there will be any noticeable differences in that or not. However, I do believe that the F1 Pro does come with a 250 milliamp hour battery. So it is a little bit lighter coming in about 49 grams and then the f1 pro max which i have here has a little bit of a different mcu in it again i'm not sure if there's any difference in the performance but this also has a 500 milliamp hour battery and it comes in at around 55 grams and just so you guys know i actually have a 4k dongle on the way for this mouse i have an f1 pro on the way and i also have an f1 moba on the way as well so when i get all those in i'll break all those down for you and i'll do really in-depth comparisons to try and help you guys decide which one's going to be the better option for you if you have the patience to wait for those and when it comes to my experience with gaming with this mouse this mouse has just performed flawlessly i haven't had any issues with it the one thing that you do have to do when you get this mouse is you're going to have to download the software i honestly kind of had issues finding the software i'm not sure if i was just doing something wrong on my end but after i actually did find the software i installed it you want to go ahead and turn the debounce time down on this and then it also has a low performance and a high performance mode so i would highly suggest switching over to the high performance mode and when it comes to the weight out of the box for this mouse looks like it's coming in at 55.9 grams so for me personally you guys know that i love smaller gaming mice and honestly this shape is incredible i wouldn't say that this is my number one favorite shape but i would definitely say this is definitely one of the top shapes out there on the market in my opinion coming over to the top of the mouse it is a little bit of a different of a feeling from anything out there that i've really used it almost kind of seems like it's a rear hump mouse but not really it does have a hump here in the middle but as you can see it's very flat and it's very low. And then when it comes to the side profiling on this mouse, honestly, the curves are almost exactly identical to a Viper Mini or the G-Wolves HTS Plus. And when comparing the Dragonfly F1 Pro to the Viper Mini, they honestly feel very similar to me, but as you can clearly see, the F1 Pro is just slightly a bit bigger. And when you put these mice together, one of the things that I noticed about the Viper Mini is the Viper Mini feels like it has a more aggressive taper towards the rear, but I feel like that the middle hump right here is a bit more defined. And when it comes to the overall top profiling of these mice, the Dragonfly just kind of feels like it's a little bit longer in the hands, but again, it doesn't feel as high up as the Viper Mini. When you get the Viper Mini in the hands, it really does feel like a bit of a shorter mouse and you do get a little bit more support from the middle hump. And as I was going back and forth A and B testing these mice, honestly, the curve profile on the sides, they feel very similar. Again, the Dragonfly just feels just slightly a bit bigger, but they honestly almost feel identical to me. The one other difference that I did notice is I feel like in the front of these mice that the Dragonfly feels a little bit higher, whereas the Viper Mini feels a little bit lower to the ground. And though these mice are not exact to one another, I honestly feel like they're incredibly similar. I feel like they're way more similar than not. All right, and then next up when comparing the Dragonfly to the G-Wolves HTS Plus, 
I feel like these mice are very similar. Again, the side profiling on these are very identical. I feel like the dragonfly just feels slightly a bit larger, but the one biggest difference that I noticed between these two mice is the dragonfly is a little bit longer. But the one thing about the HTS Plus that I've always kind of personally just had a little bit of an issue with, even though I love this mouse, it's a great mouse, it's one of my favorite. I'm not really so much of a fan of the high hump here in the middle, and I feel like this has one of the highest humps in the middle when it comes to smaller style mice and the dragonfly as you can see is a lot more flat in the top middle with the hump there but overall again as you guys look at the profile on these the curvature from the top of the middle of the mouse they honestly all feel very similar overall the dragonfly just feels flatter at the top of the mouse and overall it just feels like just slightly a little bit of a larger mouse <laughs> Next up, when it comes to comparing this mouse to the X2 Mini, I feel like this and the X2 Mini are pretty similar in size. Overall, the Dragonfly feels just a little bit larger. The X2 Mini does feel a little bit wider on the sides with the flat sides. The X2 Mini does sit lower at the front of the mouse, whereas the Dragonfly sits a little bit higher. And the X2 Mini also does have more of a rear hump. And then over to the rear of the mice, as you can see here, they feel pretty similar in the hands with the Dragonfly just being just a little bit larger. And then when it comes to the height of these mice, the Dragonfly does sit just a little bit taller than the X2 Mini does. Here you'll be able to see why I like the Dragonfly so much. It's honestly pretty close to the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. When it comes to the bottom profiling of these mice, I do feel like the Lamzu Atlantis Mini is a little more curved and is slightly a bit more narrow towards the middle. And when it comes to the overall height of these mice, the Dragonfly might just be a little bit taller. And then coming over to the rear profiling of these mice, the one thing I do like about the Dragonfly is how it's kind of flatter at the top of the mouse. Kind of reminds me of the Atlantis Mini. However, the Atlantis Mini is a bit flatter and a bit wider towards the top of the mouse. But overall, I would say the characteristics between these two mice, they honestly feel pretty similar in the hands. Of course, aside from the fact that with the Atlantis Mini, you have more of a rear hump. And as you can see, the rear curve profile on the Lambs Atlantis Mini just comes out a bit more a little bit more wider than on the Dragonfly. And I do wanna say that in the hands, the Lamzu Atlantis Mini, the hump is definitely more pronounced on it. You feel a bit more support and you definitely notice that hump a lot more. To whereas on the Dragonfly, it just feels like overall, a little bit of a flatter feeling type mouse towards the top profiling. All right, and then last but not least, the G-Wolves HTX, these two mice are very similar to one another. If you were to look at the side profiling on these mice, the HTX might possibly be just a little bit wider, but if it is, it's not by much. They're very similar to one another. And if you were to look at the top profiling on these mice, the HTX does go a bit lower towards the front, to whereas the Dragonfly sits up higher. But again, both of these mice, they kind of have that flat filling profiling on top of the mice. And one thing that I noticed when holding these mice again is that I do feel like the HTX, it feels like it dips down more towards the front and more aggressively towards the rear, whereas the Dragonfly feels a little bit softer going towards the rear and towards the front, sitting up just a little bit higher as compared to the HTX. And when it comes to the rear profiling on these mice, as you can see, they look pretty similar. I would say the top point on the HTX is a little bit more pointy, a little bit more pronounced, whereas on the Dragonfly, it does feel a bit flatter on the top when you're comparing the profile from the left and right side of the mouse, the way that it tapers off. And overall, these two mice, they feel pretty similar. They do have their differences. The Dragonfly honestly feels like it's a bit taller with having a higher front and stuff like that. It overall just feels like a little bit of a bulkier mouse, whereas the HGX just feels a little bit more aerodynamic and feeling overall lower to the ground. All right guys, and that wraps things up on the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro Max. I honestly have truly been loving this mouse. Again, I do feel like there's a couple things about this mouse that are kind of missing that are keeping it very, very close 
to being perfect in my opinion. And I can tell you guys right now, coming in at the price that this mouse is at, it is truly impressive. I can't wait to dig into this mouse, see if I can make the switches better, see if I can fix a little bit of play on the side buttons here. And I honestly think that this mouse coming in at the cost that it is, is absolutely gonna be a top contender. And I would say that around the price range that this mouse is right now, this is probably gonna move up to my number one pick. I know we got some great stuff coming out. I got the Z1 Pro on the way, the smaller egg-shaped mouse. It's supposed to be around 45 grams. I'm super excited to check that one out as well. But I wanna say that right off the bat here, I feel like we have a hit with this mouse. And I'm gonna keep you guys updated as soon as I get the 4K dongle, the F1 Pro, the MOBA edition. I'm really excited to see where this mouse is gonna lead to. All right, so if you guys have any questions or you feel like there's anything I left out, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are looking to pick this mouse up and support the channel, I went ahead and left links down in the description where you can get a $5 discount off on this mouse. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.